Hey, how's it going? And today we're taking a quick look at tuples. And the reason we are is that you'll see these in the verse programming language. And if you're not familiar with them, it can become really confusing. And so I wanted to give an example, not only of a tuple, but as a function, if I can say tuplized. So that means that the function has been sent to receive a tuple in and returns a tuple out. What is a tuple? You can think of it as a mini array that can hold variables of different types. So it can hold integers, floats, and strings, and object references. Arrays are usually much larger, but can only hold values of the same type. It's real convenient is why, because you don't need to do separate arrays. You can combine mixed types in one mini array. To start this, I'm just gonna create a verse device. So we're just gonna right click, left click. We'll leave it called Hello World Device. I'll double click here to open it. I already have some sample code written. Control A, Control C, and we'll just copy and paste it in here. And I'll do my best to try to explain this. Example one is a straightforward example of a function that has been tuplized or initiated to receive a tuple parameter in. Example function one is the name of the function. And then we have parentheses here. Within those parentheses, we create a name for our tuple, and I'm just calling it my first tuple. You can think of it more as a container as opposed to a variable type. We give it a name so we can reference it, and then we put the colons, and then we say it's establish it as a tuple type. Then we put parentheses and say, what types are we storing in it? One string and one int. And then we close that up. And now this function, it's going to be void, meaning that it's not returning any value. And then we go equals, and then we put whatever we want in our function. So like an array, we can pull the values out of the elements out of the array. So if we want to get the string value, we can create a variable, call it variable my string, initialize it as type string, and then assign to it from my first tuple, that first array position, which is going to be where the string is. Then we can create a second variable that's an integer, call it my int of type int, go to my first tuple again, we reference it, and then we say, from the way we set it up, we know that the, the element in the second position is an integer, so we just say, go ahead and assign that out. And then I just do a print string to show you that that's what's going to get pulled out. When we print this string, you're going to see what's been called. So it appears the calling function, right? This call, function call will only succeed if the, it has the correct parameters in there. So this function is expecting a string and an integer, and if it doesn't get them, it's going to fail. Sometimes the parentheses can be blank because it doesn't need to accept any arguments. If it is written to accept a parameter, then the parameters have to come in. The function is not required to do anything with those parameters that it receives. It can send back completely different values. So you can almost think of this as the key. This is the lock. So it's saying you can only call me if you have a string and it in you. To call that function, example function one, we have to have a string and an int value. And if we don't, the call won't succeed. And you'll see this a lot when you get errors because you're not, things aren't being called correctly or you're not set up to receive the call function back properly either. And that's in the second example. Now the second example is a little bit more tricky. So here it's kind of the exact same thing we did up here. Here in the second example, instead of calling it my first tuple, we're just calling it param1. And then we're initializing it the same way as we did. We want a string. And if we wanted two strings, we'd have string, string, int, whatever we wanted. I just have two values in here. But if we wanted 10 values in here, we could set it up to have 10 values in here. But I'm just doing two. And then similar to up here, we do, it's all the same, exactly the same, except Instead of void, we're saying we're going to return a tuple and it's going to come back as a string and an int. So down here, even though we were called, we're being called here on this second example, example function two is being called and it's saying, hey, you can only call me if you have a string and an int in you. And it says, okay, well, that's what I have. I'm sending a string and an integer to you. And it says, okay, that, that'll work. But just because I received those doesn't mean I have to send those back. I could send something completely different back. So that's exactly what I'm doing here is I'm creating within this function, example function two, I'm creating a new tuple and I'm initializing it with a string and an int and I'm calling it, this is my tuple world now with the value 77 and that's being called my tuple. I'm not doing anything with the values that were sent to me 
the string and the int that were sent to me. In fact, I'm ignoring them and I'm just sending a brand new tuple back to you. So that brand new tuple back to you is what you're going to get. So when it gets this, because we called, we were sending a return. Now here, we're taking those return values. We're kind of disregarding what's in here. We're taking those return values and now assigning them to my tuple return. And then how we pulled the values out down here is how we're pulling the values out. We're extracting the values out here, just like we would in an array. So we're creating an, a new string variable and we're saying on my tuple return in the first array position, which is the string position, go ahead and assign that, whatever's in there, to my string one. And then all we're gonna do is we're just going to print out my string one. So my string one will not say tuples are containers that can hold mixed types. It's gonna say, this is my tuple world now. So now if I go back into the program here, I can hit build that verse code. I don't get any errors. I can bring my verse device into the scene and then I can just go ahead and launch and we'll see if what we expect to print out prints out. Okay, so we're back and let's see if we see what we expect to see. Start game. So example one, this string contains and prints the values that were sent to it when called and that was trouble tuple business and the value one. So that is correct. So that was the simple call function one. The second one is, this is my tuple world. So that was, we called with different parameters, but we get back what it sent. So this is my tuple world was in the function called, not the calling function. So anyway, I hope you found this helpful. I realize it can be a little confusing, so I just wanted to shed a little light on things. So take care, and I'll talk to you next time.